an organization of residents of Princeton Borough and Township with diverse backgrounds, interests, and talents. Princeton Future has grown out of a concern that much of the planning and proposed development of the critical downtown spaces have been proceeding in an unconnected manner. The aim of Princeton Future is to assist the municipal authority to take a forward-looking and more comprehensive approach. Investigation and consultation undertaken by Princeton Future indicates that these objectives are achievable with good planning. More detailed studies and further involvement of all concerned parties are, however, clearly called for. I'm, I'm sure he's hearing you. Uh, I say, we see ourselves as a facilitator of community discussion that in the run through that we did with the plaza outside, we then translated that into physical recommendations to the borough council, which were used to generate an RFP in that case to create what you see happening. Um, and, and we feel that the achievement was that here we now have a public square where before it was not as clear that that might happen. What we want to do is create a plan that we would try to take to the powers that be, say this is what we heard from this community, this is what we think it means physically, these are the zoning recommendations that we might have. These are the suggestions that came from the neighborhood in relationship to such issues as residential uses and continuation. Uh, it is a little confusing though because borough council and township committee do have, would hold public meetings on any major changes. And so right. it's a little confusing to have Prince of Future in, injected into the middle of the process. And I, I understand there's an advantage to kind of getting your ducks in a row before well, the government has to make a decision. Were you, but were you, I don't, I'm not sure that that is what we feel is happening. And I think that's what you hear from All right. Craig. Well, so could I tell Mrs. you what Sheldon said? He said that last year the university gave 20000 but not this year. That the borough has given 10 thousand to Princeton Future that individuals contribute, um, that Sheldon's business is paid but not he personally, um, that they have five thousand in the bank and that the individual names are on the report which is here someplace. Okay. What's the total budget? Give us perspective. Those individual you know, it's not names, a lot of money. I don't want to go into this but those individual names I would like, uh, and I'm not asking you to go find out how many business people are those individual he names. He says it's in the annual report, and he says it's here, so. Okay. That's but, yeah, I mean, I think, oh, I, it, I assume that this is a nonprofit organization, that all of this has to be public. Right. So you have to have a list of all So it's a 501c. Right. Yeah. But my problem is that it's not Go easily ahead. available. Because, <laughs> because on the internet. you know, I feel as if oh. that side of the table is getting a lot of time. And yeah. Oh, what is? This is great. I would just like to say that um, I like the idea of like a playground because this summer the uh, children who went to the uh, Hank Canal Learning Center. I think where they played some of the time was in the parking lot right there by the center. Yeah. So I like the idea of, of a uh, playground for the kids someplace in the area. But would that change if they have to cross the street? Witherspoon Street's not an easy cross. They did that for safety issues. And maybe they need to move the, well, that part of the thing over to the playground. You know, uh, what is that, a child care center, or what? what is that part? It's a learning center. It's a learning, but, learning center, but, but I mean, could the no, but I meant, should the learning center be part of the hospital, the new hospital, because well, the and everything's the local. The all the time. No, I don't think it should be. And so, kids get hit, too. But, but th there was an accident right here. There's a school bus stop right here. Right. Uh, I know the kids. Uh, uh, and, right. Uh, so this whole intersection is fraught with problems, I think, and uh, 
I think we should try to make it visually more safe. Uh, so. You know, you, speaking of safety, why are there traffic bumps on Hodge Road? And, and uh, Mercer Street, but none on Witherspoon Street, Lee Good Avenue, point. and Birch Avenue. I can ask Mayor Reed that. I, I'd like for him to answer me. They don't work we, on Hodge we Road. We rebuilt Hodge Road, Road, and we responded yeah, to the you know, comments Mrs. from the Gray. neighborhood, okay. right. and we haven't rebuilt Witherspoon Street yet. And that's a good comment for you to make. Yeah. Everybody's going to get him. <laughs> hey, no, it's uh, it would slow down, but you have the bumps, and then will the ambulances be able? To well, we we got a lot of hate. We got a that's lot of flack. No, we that's got a lot of flack from. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned ambulances. That's a poor excuse. No. We got a lot of flack from the fire company and from the rescue squad when we did Hodge Road. We got almost 50-50 support and opposition from the residents on Hodge Road. When the time came, it was the residents who had young children that were advocating the speed controls, and that's the way the borough council sliced it and decided if we had to choose between a 50 and 50 split, we chose the families that had children. Funny and families. they were the ones that won. So, Funny families. So, well, they, every, they Everybody all on Hodge Road. In fact, the guy, who, who, the guy who litigated against us reminded me that he gave, he, he contributed $40,000 a year in borough taxes. And why were we not listening to him? So, I said, so if you don't like what we're doing, then take us to court. And he did. But we won. <laughs> That's what that's what comes in all this, and they'll be they'll be somewhere along the way, uh, somewhat want something or other. There'll be some more litigation with this. You just have to be prepared for it. Sure. But this is one a of the very values. important traffic yeah. area area right there. I mean, it's, it's well, it's all not these. really safe. Right. So Here, I mean, it brings up Birch. a whole host of issues, doesn't it? Because this the the future of these buildings has been called into question. Right, the, um, what is it, low-income housing there. Right. It's owned by the uh, Housing Authority housing. of the Borough of Princeton Haybop. Uh, those were built very early on in the public housing program. Uh, uh, and they are at a certain point in their useful life and something has, uh, needs to be done to maintain them as top-rate residents. Michael, just a quick question again. Uh, I worked for Princeton University for uh, 31 years, and believe me, Butler Track is nowhere near as substantial as those older homes are right now. I agree you with you. Model, you don't say, well, they've lived their life, they have to move. Uh, see if you can get Butler Track for Princeton University to move. I, I agree. I, I meant to, Have you ever been in those homes? Absolutely. And I've been in these. Yeah. Uh, because I, I did the public housing down at Camp Court. So, and we actually did some plans for the renovation of these as well in my office. Uh, I just mean they need to be brought up to contemporary standards because a building that old needs repair. And I, I'm just looking at the intersection. If the crosswalk were more of a straight from well, Clay from Street. From a traffic planning standpoint, yeah. all of the intersections that don't are align off. are problematic. Yeah. Because you can't, you, it just makes it twice as difficult to control. And it, I mean, there, there's advantages, right? Because it slows the people down on the side street. But it makes it much more confusing and more apt to have accidents. Reverend Carter, we will introduce ourselves. So, do I need to introduce myself? I know who you are, but the other people don't know who you are. As many said, I'm Reverend Carter, a concerned citizen here in Princeton. Let's go, Born and raised here. And I'm very much concerned about the uh, community here. Uh, I lived on John Street for quite a long time. I belong to a few organizations here. And I guess I just can't leave Princeton because I love it so much. 
but I am concerned about how you're about to renovate it. And I don't know why you're taking so long. Uh, this should have been done 50, 40 years ago when I was born. And now here it is, 2005. We're talking about a matchbox that is already filled, and we're trying to put some more matches in it. Uh, I'm a little disturbed behind that because of the fact, I guess, of our forefathers, our founding fathers, didn't have a vision. And where there's a vision, <laughs> uh, you can't do anything. But now everybody's here sitting at the table trying to unscramble this spaghetti and don't know which one is from the other. So what's your vision? Well, uh, I have a real, I'm just listening right now to find out what's really going on. This Princeton Future, I've heard about the organization. I don't know where they came to the different parts. Uh, I just want to remind everyone, we have about five minutes to sum up within your groups because then we're going to have our reports and we have four to do today. I don't, know okay. the, I don't know whether this group here has came to the different parts of the community to really ask what the community wants or whatever their desires are. You know. well, we've got various people. We are, we're residents. A lot of us are residents in this area and they're looking for our comments. What's your future for the hospital? I live right down the street from the hospital. Uh -huh. Well, the hospital doesn't have enough room, number one. Uh, do they know what they want to do? If the hospital moves, what will happen? What would you like to see there? Well, that's another story. I have to give it some thought. Or, or do you want the hospital there? Do you want them to expand? And that means they need to expand. If you were there Wednesday night, they need to additional 300,000 feet of space just to live to the end of this decade, they say, economically. So Eric Craig's vision is for them to move. I, well, I'm asking Reverend I'm sorry, Well, I don't know because of where are they going to get the space from? His house, not oh, ours. Your house? <laughs> Let me, let me make a comment that so uh, that's uh, to lighten this up. Uh, Jan has done a very good job for the hospital in showing what they would have to do to modernize immediately, and particularly if we required them to stay on site. Then she'd show, well, what would they have to grow in order to satisfy the next 25 years? She also did a vision of what they would grow to beyond the 25 years. And the task force did not let her show that to you because we were fearful of um, the revolt that we'd get in the room. We were too. But we just did it to but show we, that it And she showed us the drawing, and I said, you cannot show that to the people. I love this. In the you mirror, know that it. Doc, mm -hmm. doctors are telling what? their patients that the hospital so is going to move. So, you know, oh, informally, people are saying that. I'm sure. Gonna I'm sure. Because they can, they're, they're looking at what's the trend in this discussion. So the question is, what's good for the community to shape the change? Of course, what I say to the doctors when they say that to me, um, I know they're moving. And then I turn around and I say, and how much are you prepared to contribute to their capital funds? And they look at me, who, me? And I said, yeah, because that's when you do and expand a hospital. That's where the bulk of the yep. uh, capital support comes from. It's an investment for the doctors in town as, as much as for the patients. And they know that. They, they were hit up with the e-building. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, we spoke of uh, uh, like retail that. sales Let's on stand. the bottom, some right. stores, and like right. living but, areas. Right. You know, that, that was taken down. Yeah. I was wondering, just with yeah. Reverend Carter, does he have, because he came a little late, we want to make sure we get input from him. We're all discussing. I'm just a note taker. I'm not part of Princeton Future. You know, I, I, I'm going to. One quick statement, uh, 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 sort of aside from this. You spoke about the escalating prices of the homes right. in the area. I'm still trying to fathom a Bosky Brothers postage stamp that's selling for $500,000. And the residents who live down Witherspoon Street that have two and a half times what the Barsky brothers have, 
and getting offerings of three hundred twenty, three hundred thirty thousand dollars. That is very strange to me. At one seventy three Witherspoon Street, I feel as I, as that I have two and a half times what they have. Hey, you right? But listen, somebody that was an unsolicited offer. You can counter it. You can do anything you want. This is what they, they went out for half a million dollars. Will they get a half a million? Trust me. Things are changing. I'm in commercial real estate. I've got a property up in Scotch Plains, all right? 50,000 feet on 11 acres. We offered it for sale at 3.85 million for its present use, industrial manufacturing building. We turned down $7 million on a sale for residential use. Because we had someone else who's giving us even more value, we felt, on another one. You, everybody determines it themselves. The whole point, what I'm saying is, people are going to get offered a lot of money on this street for their houses. Will they sell it to allow them to maintain residential like my neighbor did? They said, hey, we made enough money, we're happy, we'd rather maintain the neighborhood as residential or I could sell it to the other higher bidder and they could do. These are personal choices that you're gonna have to make on the residential area. We can, we can do zoning that will, whatever, maintain residential or do RB as the boroughs. I'm only saying zoning as it is. Okay. Zoning, uh, uh, residential. But somebody offered you three and a quarter, okay. whatever. Are we supposed Don't to sell your house? Well, let's try to summarize. No, no, no. Uh, Jeff, do you want to read off what we, uh, what was said and, and that you would read to the group and see if everybody... <laughs> want it. Oh. Uh... You got notes? No, I don't. Uh, just, I, I, I think the best they want to maintain the residential area in this. In this, we want to see residential for sure. There is some mixed you mixed feelings about maintaining. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, this is public housing, and so let's let's but they put do the, on the rest. And what this but, is. It's decrepit. Right. It's, it's unsightly. These are really it's deep. Deep. These are heavily. And that yeah. may be part so of. Maybe that should be torn down and some open space there. Right. But the thing is, if you take this out, right. you've got to replace it. Oh, of course. It no, no. I agree else. that. I agree Surely. that. We yeah. Yeah. I, I That's certainly, what we're going to do. With what you're going to. In fact, we should amplify, here. increase, and amplify. Right. Yeah. Someone at the meeting the other night That's suggested that. that this be given to the cemetery. How do people feel about that? Not given, but you know what I mean. No. This be allowed. No. The cemetery needs it. Yes, you really do. I don't have a problem with it. What's I, in between I, I there? I really and the cemetery? Re don't think we should give more land to the housing? cemetery. No, I don't either. No. What's the cemetery? Oh, here? Or no, the cemetery butts right up no, to, the, to the parking is, lot there. And then this, um, the Witherspoon Muse, well, it's those pieces give, are right there. You know, yeah. No, but uh, my point <laughs> is that it, it strikes me as, uh, I mean, I happen to, to think the current cemetery provides an open space, at least visually, right. if in no other way, That's that's very nice, but um, I mean, this is really needs, valuable I think, residential yeah. land. I, I just think okay, it's... So. How about if we free associate, since I, yeah. that's sort of what I think we're supposed to be doing, and run housing along Franklin there, and then devote, pick a spot that's really a sort of central spot, not along here, because this is really traffic, but I'm sort of thinking of maybe right in the middle of this area of housing that could become a substantial amount of open space that but I think what we're uh, what we're what we're saying is that it needs to be really visible for it not to disintegrate right. into uh, and you know a problem spot but do you so think on a residential visible, street it's the, not visible enough well it depends or do you think how it be? deep it is I think along yeah. Witherspoon it is going to be more visible people have to feel that they can use it it has to be really it has to be clearly a sense of the community, community. Yeah. yeah and exactly and that was one of the things about that uh, writer's block along Paul Robeson is it was very open and it was right. like everybody goes by well, there and then, so what happened yeah. was people were like oh look at that I gotta stop I gotta get out I gotta look yeah. at that yeah I, you I might be right have that it, have I think it, we need some sort of buffer here for these people or transition uh, and could that be residential or not you mean I don't know but visual but buffer? 
but uh, you need to think about the people on Jefferson Road. Correct. Right. Actually, and we that's, haven't. That'd be a great design charrette, you know, if, if we took our program and turned it into to the um, to the details of what a, a whole lot of people spend a whole weekend doing to figure out alternate ways to make everything we said happen there, just in terms of fit. Our, at our table, we discussed the possibility of aggressively restitching the residential fabric in here. And what we talked about is taking the old, the municipal, township municipal garage, possibly the packet properties, and if somehow this area could become residential, this block could be connected and restored into Witherspoon. Residential could be supported as it connected to the edge of Community Park School and the recreation complex. If we did that, okay, we might have to the offer um, those people spot? that were. And where is that different spot? So where can that different spot be in here? Let's say we said to the packet, look, you guys got to get out of here, but we got a great okay. building for you across the street. Like where? On here somewhere. No, put it back where the old garage is that you just talked back about. Back over here. Right. I mean, it's right. A, it's a good right. But that I would have an institutional there. use again. You know, okay, that's an I option. Back there. There. I would right. imagine the packet would love to have everything in one building. Right. It doesn't seem so bad to me. Which? Back well, here? if you put it back there. Yeah, hide okay. it back there. Well, if it was serviced off of the back, not off the residential street. Well, it... Or is it now? Yeah. Well, look. They could. Well, anyway, that's... Anyhow, this is all, all, all I'm throwing out is, are there ways to um, relieve around. the pressure Okay, Michael is going to start with his table first. You wrote it all then? You got it on. Actually, I think we can turn that off now, do you yeah. think? Thank you, Gail. Um, <coughs> well, our table had a wide range of discussion. Uh, and I'm going to uh, ask Jeff. Fury, who was our scribe to report. Thank you, Michael. Uh, major overall theme is maintain the area's residential. And that even includes your uh, alternative uses of the hospital. That could be from seniors to graduate housing to apartment. But make it a rateable. That's very important. Make it a rateable for the town. We understand certain buildings within the hospital may have to go, they're fun functionally obsolete. Community needs that need to be taken care of, uh, that could um, park, light setting, playground, recreational use, sidewalks, better residential lighting in that area can, on the street. Can I just ask? Are you talking about the hospital side, or are you talking about the whole street? The whole street. The whole street. Uh, also, community needs on Witherspoon, maybe some bumps to slow down the traffic with that. Uh, with the, one of the things that came out of it also was with the present housing that is there, want to maintain that. There was some mixed discussion. One is maintain whatever retail there is, grandfather it in, but don't let any more go in, or to make it like the borough has the RB group business on the first ground, uh, first floor, and you have residential on the second. We had a bit mixed feelings on that on the table. Some were very adamant about having residential totally. Other people felt whatever. The other one. Anything else? I mentioned residential life. Okay. Great. Thank you. Who's next? I think it, it was a strong consensus that there should not be on the hospital site a single use but rather that it should be mixed use with a heavy emphasis on uh, various types of residential use, including uh, affordable housing and uh, low in and, uh, and uh, senior housing. Um, it was felt that uh, small existing mom and pop uh, retail 
properties uh, along Witherspoon should be uh, permitted in the future. That should continue. That there's a possibility uh, perhaps to alleviate some of the traffic uh, congestion that occurs to develop a street possibly that would extend from Witherspoon Street uh, between the school and the packet building uh, to the west going out toward uh, uh, Byer Lane. And also on the hospital side, um, I'm also being reminded that on the hospital side itself, it was suggested that there should be, that the, the, the street level should be animated, should be activated, and perhaps should have a commercial use as part of the uh, mixed use uh, component of, of that property. There was discussion of a, perhaps a secondary network for bicycles and pedestrians so that they wouldn't have to um, utilize Witherspoon Street as heavily as it presently is used and could perhaps alleviate some of the conflict between automobile use, parking, pedestrians, and bicycles. That is part of the, uh, as a spin-off of the mixed-use development of the hospital that a Jitney bus service uh, could be instituted and that because of the concentration of uses, of residential use and retail use at that property, that it would be then justi justified. Our uh, table also felt that the continuity, the aesthetic visual continuity of, it, of Witherspoon Street would be important, and that's regarding the sidewalks, lighting, uh, the how the edge of the street is dealt with in relationship to the sidewalk because of the vertical differenti differentiation between the roadway surface and the sidewalk. That there should be uh, no, on the, in the reuse of the hospital site, there should be no, in the future, no large, bulky, institutional looking buildings. That whatever is done there should be uh, scaled down and should be of a somewhat more residential uh, character, more in keeping with the adjacent neighborhood. It was felt that the existing historic buildings along Witherspoon Street should be preserved, that the trees, uh, the street trees along Witherspoon are very important and should be preserved and protected, and as they're removed, they should be replaced. And there was a strong consensus that there should be uh, no one-way traffic on Witherspoon, that it should remain as a two-way street. And I think part of the reasoning of that is that the one-way traffic tends to uh, increase the speed of those who are using the street, whereas the uh, two-way traffic uh, creates some can, can, uh, constriction, constraint upon the drivers, a bit of friction, if you will, psychologically, and therefore tends to reduce the speed of traffic on Witherspoon Street. Um, I think, unless someone else has some other thoughts, I think that pretty well concludes it. Uh, yes, as part of the uh, notion about lighting and the continuity of Witherspoon Street, it was suggested that the lights that exist on Nassau Street should be extended down Witherspoon Street to um, connect aesthetically and psychologically with the Nassau Street. Which lights? Are you talking about the Acorn or are you talking about the highway? Oh, the, the pedestrian street level. Street lighting. lighting. Okay. Generally, generically. And I think we no, spelled... No, the, 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 the Acorn. Yeah. I think it was felt strongly that while we would like to see more lighting, that doesn't necessarily mean brighter lighting, but rather that uniformity and continuity of lighting is what we were really talking about. We, we felt the opposite, that there should be a visual uh, difference between the central business district and the residential area. Another point of view. Uh, <coughs> Sunday parking for parishioners. Uh, yes, it was uh, felt that um, that the reuse, I, I believe, that we're referring to of the hospital site could be shared by the parishioners on Sunday morning in that typically there's, not a, there's no strong demand for retail parking on Sunday morning and that they, there could be shared parking uh, for those who are attending services at the churches. Did I get that wrong, Sheldon? Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought I yes, heard... Sir. 
I thought I heard Shirley saying uh, parking on the street on Sunday mornings is a good plan. Did everyone hear that? I think I missed that in my notes, so the, the parking on Witherspoon Street would be permitted on Sunday morning in order that the folks going to services could share that, that parking. Did, did we make the point that we really need an evaluation of the parking and traffic that we don't know what we're talking about? Very <laughs> important point, and that was one of the last notes that I made here, and I overlooked it, uh, that we, we have no idea what we're talking about regarding parking or traffic, and that it's really urgent for the borough to do a comprehensive study of that issue. And, and the township, as it relates particularly, as, as it relates to Witherspoon from one end to the other, and the connections to uh, Jefferson and over to Byard Lane. Okay. Well, if I were capable of being succinct, I would probably say ditto, but I'm not capable of that. <laughs> and it isn't exactly ditto. However, uh, many of the themes that the first two tables mentioned we also discussed. Um, some of the issues we discussed would be uh, how do we feel collectively about an increase in residential population in that area? And for the most part, we felt that would be a good thing for the survival of the neighborhood. Um, we believe there's been a diminishment of the population from the historical neighborhood, the residential population, and we felt that additional uh, residential use in, uh, in this specific area that we're talking about could help the neighborhood uh, stay on its feet as a viable residential neighborhood and support uh, residential uses. Specifically with relation to the streetscape, we strongly believe the Witherspoon streetscape should be improved in this area, specifically along the edge of the hospital as it relates to Witherspoon Street. Uh, we supported, uh, or we, we discussed, and for the most part support um, uh, creating some type of open space that would be scaled to the neighborhood, scaled to the local community, that would create a park of some sort that uh, neighborhood residents, both seniors, mothers, and children, could come to and uh, use for uh, for their daily stroll or sitting in the pub, sitting out in the sun. On the hospital site, we uh, discussed the options that were outlined on Wednesday night, and uh, our uh, basic feelings were that we supported residential uses. We supported a mixed residential use, which might include components of a continuing care retirement facility, but might also have affordable housing and might also have housing uh, for different income levels. And uh, we, we seem to feel that a, a potential mix uh, in this site of different age groups would also benefit the life of the community. We discussed the pros and cons of having the site developed by one large group or having the site somehow reparcelized and conceived into a few smaller parcels that were developed uh, by separate entities. We don't have a firm conclusion on that issue. We just discussed the pros and cons. Um, but we do believe, uh, we did believe the potential for having the site uh, broken down into uh, smaller parcels could have some benefits in terms of uh, attracting investors from the local community and developers from the local community people that would have an understanding of Princeton as opposed to a monster scale development that could only attract investors from a national development uh, perspective. We believe that possibly the town, the two local governments collectively, or possibly a community group such as Princeton Community Housing could sponsor the, uh, the overriding uh, intelligence and direction behind this concept of, of reparcelization. Um, we believe that uh, we had a discussion about Franklin and the cemetery and the uh, public housing along that street and we believe that uh, that area could use some extremely sensitive design work to uh, help not only the far edge over on Jefferson but the Witherspoon edge on the corner this sort of edge, the southern edge of the parking lot uh, of the uh, hospital properties. We think there's plenty of opportunity there for either open space 
for additional residential. We discussed a little bit cemetery expansion. We had mixed feelings about that, and also um, some sort of buffer zones to the uh, Jefferson neighborhood. And um, finally, we discussed how we felt about the redeveloping the hospital site simply from a physical standpoint, the existing building fabric. And uh, a couple people felt that uh, the site should be cleared, it should be a tabula rasa and a new project. And um, a larger number of the table felt that it could be sensitively re-examined and probably some selective demolition and some buildings could possibly be reused if they supported the larger vision that we conceive for the uh, overall site. Did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Not at the table. Well, I just, yeah, I wanted to add that I think that one one point that I make and I just want it really out there is that it's very we feel that this is a public a public street. It is the public realm and it needs to remain the public realm and um, not become privatized. Did everybody hear that? One last thing I'd like to tell everybody, we have party favors for you today. Thank you so much for coming out to join Aww. us. So Princeton Aww. Future is giving everybody, when you leave on your way out today, a free 2005 calendar which <laughs> celebrates the Town Garden Writer's Block, which we did this summer on Paul Robeson Place. So on your way out, we're stacked at the table. We'd like you all to take one. Thank you, thank you. If it starts out October 2004 and it runs to the end of 2005. Okay, I'm not going to be able to write mine. I'm going to report it. I'm the writer and reporter and I'm going to try to go real quickly. Um, okay, I guess some of the initial points we sort of threw out on the table just to, to get started um, began with the need for continuity between the township and borough sections of the street including a sense of their uh, uh, consistency and coordination of the uses. Um, it was decided definitely by our table that it remained residential, and when I say it, I'm talking about the street, um, and that in the case of properties that are currently used as commercial, whether the packet with buildings that are residential type but have been converted to commercial, that they return to residential, and to discourage additional commercial uses uh, along the street. Um, and any shifting over of, of, uh, of uses into a consideration of the hospital um, certainly might move some of the retail into that as a, a uh, future development. Um, there was question and concern about uh, two new developments, um, one that's been completed, the Barsky development, and one that is, has gone through demo and is going to be constructed, Hunan, and that those uh, buildings, either in their form or their type and their uh, setback and perhaps even other physical aspects not set the precedent for how the rest of the street uh, might uh, change if there are changes afloat in any consideration along the street. Um, and then we, of course, we questioned what should it be with regard to the hospital? Um, if the hospital is uh, majority residential, it, it was thought that it would solidify the desire for the uh, street to be primarily residential. Um, we discussed that there are sort of three residential <coughs> options that are being considered by the healthcare task force, and one that was decided to have little desire was that the hotel not be a type, that, the, that a dorm uh, really um, is at question in terms of the openness of its occupancy, um, and that in any reuse is a residential, which the third would, would be a uh, open occupancy, affordable, uh, multiple type, um, age, and um, uh, as I said, affordability, that it benefit to the coffers of the city in the way of rentables. 
Um, there certainly was, along Witherspoon Street, thought to be an opportunity to have neighborhood scale retail, which would be similar to what uh, would be, uh, or currently is allowed, only RV zone, but basically a ground floor street um, accessed uh, uh, type of retail. Um, but that diverse uses, affordability, as I said, types be the, be the primary uh, consideration. We looked at um, the, a street pattern. We sort of took the approach that if what we liked were the neighborhoods that pre-exist and their street patterns and scales, the scale of their buildings and their lot sizes, that that would be sort of the, the base approach, but just to overlay uh, continue Carnahan through, demo all the buildings obviously on the hospital site, and create individual um, lots, of single family detached homes. But then also there were the uh, accepted um, advantages to taking uh, the existing parking garage in the case of retail being provided on the hospital site and using it as uh, overflow. It was even suggested that it be used um, as overflow for high school parking that seems to be in dire need. And, but the bottom line on the retail is that all the businesses are really should be owned by local residents, if not their own owner-occupied units, but certainly that they are um, small scale. We discussed subdividing or reparcelization are subdividing on the most extreme, which would be individual lots, but certainly reparcelization was an option. And we looked at reuse of the, of the existing six-story building and that it could be uh, apartments. In fact, some of the rooms that are double rooms with baths and, and it's noted it has plenty of uh, plumbing are fairly good size apartment units. So they may be efficiencies, but certainly could, uh, with their current divisions, their demising walls, could be converted to apartments. Um, and that many different um, household types could be served there, including the need for single room occupancy uh, types of residences. Um, if the, it's decided, and we talked about the biggest building at the hospital being less attractive or perhaps unattractive to uh, its most um, its closest neighbors that that may offer other opportunities for development, but still within the, the parameters that were set with regard to uh, primarily residential. Um, assisted living and the CCR, CCRC concept as a residential type was not thought, and that was our third type of resident, to be one that would, if in totality, if the site was converted to it, that use, um, it would probably have the same level of traffic issues, and it was not. It was seen more in its commercial, uh, from its commercial perspective, rather than as a uh, residence of, of uh, individuals who are managing their own, own lives. So. That was a, a real issue, that there were going to be three shifts of, of staffing and there would be uh, ambulances and some of the same kinds of visitation and things that would happen, that already happened at the hospital. There was an interesting point with regard to, since what we're talking about are zoning, is that there's a lack of, when variances are given, and of course there's the reluctance if you put the zoning in place and you're defining exactly what you want, the degree to variance is not specified in terms of the cap on any um, um, variance and that that should always be considered um, as we look at this variance process. Um, I think that we had, oh, we did have a discussion about the concern of a proliferation of rental um, units and how that from an investor standpoint and anything that sort of supports mass or single land ownership is from an investor mode, that it has not been a, a positive uh, for, for the street. 
Um, and so the consideration of how to stem the tide of that uh, non-owner occupied units was really um, something that was talked about quite a bit. Um, we did a little tax analysis on our base concept of what, you know, were 27 houses that we probably would be able to add on, on mimicking the, um, the uh, neighboring neighborhood street pattern. Um, and probably figured that that's the low end, 27 and around $7,000, uh, 7,000 annual tax base to something that obviously would be greater with other and mixed uses. So, along the street, not all one use, 60-40 pattern would be um, preserved. There could be some sawtoothing where there are houses that are 100% residential. Uh, the hospital, you possibly keep the garage for larger use. Franklin Avenue to uh, residential use was preferred by most at, at our table. Um, and Franklin Avenue in terms of the existing buildings, strengthening their appearance and, and their uh, use utility to the very important uh, group that they, they house. Um, you know, we've bounced around ideas about demoing the, the six-story building. Um, the efficiencies of it and non-efficiencies. I talked a little bit about that in terms of the units, and um, that's about it. My table of you. Okay, there's side. Of, well. <laughs> well, give us a chance first. Uh, oh, Jane I looked. Jane had it. other notes. Uh, yeah. Does that pretty oh, well capture it? Well, you didn't. You didn't talk about our non-committal. Uh, or we didn't actually come to a uh, conclusion. Mike. Let let let, let Mike. him yeah, have yeah, Mike. Uh, we talked in circles about traffic on Witherspoon Street and we really come to a conclusion. Uh, issues of whether you should increase the throughput capabilities of Witherspoon or decrease the throughput capabilities of Witherspoon, uh, transit, or jitney issues on Witherspoon, uh, those are things which uh, I think require a lot of discussion and thought and the traffic study, uh, parking studies I think would be a very good thing. Jan is largely covered here. Yes, Kevin? Only if you're done, I want to add one thing from our table. Okay. okay. Let me get my pen ready and what do you have to say? Uh, I, I neglected to mention that we also discussed the various scenarios proposed at Wednesday night's hospital task force. And uh, we were collectively not impressed with a, a Palmer Square type of development, mixed commercial office residential <laughs> use to the location and we were not impressed by hotel conference center use for the location, and we were most uh, persuaded by uh, variations of residential use for the community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes, Dan? Um, so only because um, I don't want it to take on a life of its own, that um, we do a lot of um, senior living environments and CCRCs, and I can't tell you why I, I, I echo that a traffic and parking study absolutely need to be done. Um, I will also tell you that um, CCRC development would diminish traffic and parking to that site by 50 to 75 percent. The staffing levels are significantly <coughs> lower. There's a thousand outpatients a day that come to that site that would be eliminated. So there, there, it is not, and I just want to you know, not to have that statement become fact for people who leave the room and say, oh, CCRCs contribute a lot of traffic because they, they do not. I'm sorry, a CCRC is a continuing care retirement community that has residential assisted living and long-term care. That information okay. with regard to the 1,000 visitors, did you say visitors yes. per day, is something that could be very useful because we don't have that kind of data from the current hospital on that site to certainly make that assessment. And it depends on how many units there are at a CGRC. Okay. We will see you again next week. But before you leave, make sure that your table uh, leader knows you were at this table. Because every table leader should have the list of their, of their attendees. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs>